All right, here we go, you guys. It's Yara Sell, the multipreneur, and you know what it is. It's Monday. What's going on to those of you on Instagram? Hello to everybody here on Facebook and YouTube. What's going on, you guys? It's one o'clock. It's a Money Monday. You guys know that we start at 1 p.m. on the dot, and we are in the Money Mindset Series. So for those of you who are on Facebook and for those of you who are on YouTube, you may see me kind of look down right here. And then for those of you who are on Instagram, you may see me look up here. <laughs> I'm gonna get the cameras together. But for right now, this is it is what it is. All right, y'all. So we normally start off, oh, first, first, let me just say, if this is your first time watching, I am Yara Sell. I am the multipreneur, and I started Money Monday as an extension, a tool to help you with money tips. Uh, we do it a little different here. We talk about God and money, and it's an extension to those people who already have my journal. What journal? Don't mind if I tell you. This one, From Red to Black, Weekly Financial Journal, and... It comes paperback and it comes in spiral version. So here's the thing. If you are a person, I have received a lot of commentary about this. You got the journal from Target.com, Barnes and Noble, Books A Million, Amazon. We're everywhere online. So if you purchase the journal from those places, it's not signed. Why? Because it's coming directly from those stores. And if you buy the journal from my website that you can see right there, I am the multipreneur.com. Sorry, Instagram, you guys can't see this, but you can see the words if you get on Instagram, I meant Facebook or YouTube. <laughs> but the only way that you can get a signed copy is if you buy it from my website, that one right there. I am the multipreneur.com. So I have some exciting news and uh, maybe not so exciting for some of you, but the workshop is completely sold out. Um, and so if you missed the workshop, I am so sorry that you missed the workshop. However, um, you have an opportunity to get the workbook and to get a private session with me one-on-one. -on -one. If you're married, the couple together, you can purchase that slot on my website. It's $99. You'll get the workbook and you'll get a one-on-one -on -one session with me. And you're going to also get a journal if you haven't received the journal yet. So I'm actually going to give away two journals today and a session, one session, two journals, what I need you to do, how do, how do you get in the drawing? What I need you to do is you're going to comment below if you are on Instagram right here. If you're on Facebook, YouTube, comment. And then after you comment, I want you to share this video and you'll be in. You'll be automatically in. So, yeah, and I'll make sure that um, I'm giving away two journals today in one session. All right. We're in the Money Mindset series, y'all. And for those of you who missed last week, we just kind of did a little introduction on um, the money mindset. And the reason that I know a lot of people are in the positions and the situations that they're in is because of the mindset. So I hope that today you're going to get something out of it. So let me, we're my readers. Now, typically we start off Money Monday with scripture, but with this Money Mindset series, we're doing it a little bit different this time. We're doing um, a little bit more of like a dialogue, uh, more of like a session, so to speak. So that's the only reason, by the way, that um, it's not coming up on the screen. All right, let me get my readers on because y'all know I can't, I can't see my notes without these things. <laughs> I can't see my notes. All right, so second part of money mindset. Let's talk about this. So one of the things that I want people to realize is that we shape our views about money based off of our experiences. And for a lot of us, our views about money started before we were five years old. 
Okay. So um, I'm going to give you a couple examples. I wrote down a couple of examples for my own self, things that I've heard my parents say and stuff like that. Um, how many of you, and here's the thing, share with me if you also uh, heard some of these things, or maybe uh, you know something that I'm not going to say. So I want you to share because other people, you can help other people with your experience as well. How many of you have heard a parent, guardian, family member, somebody say, we don't have the money? How many of you have heard that? How many of you have heard, um, it's too hard to keep money? How many of you have heard that? How many of you have heard, we can't afford that? We can't afford that. What are you asking for that for? We can't afford that. That's not something that we do here. We don't, we don't do that. How many of you have heard, um, I don't know, where are we going to get the money for that? How many of you have heard these things as a child? See, one of the things that I realized is we've been taught differently as it pertains to money, right? And it's the reason that I find sometimes when I talk to some of my friends, like from college, they had totally different experiences and the things that were said to them, um, it's reflective in the way that they, they do their life, right? So it, it just starts early. Ask yourself, so when I'm having dinner with my children, what are the things that we're talking about? Are we talking about, are we gossiping about cousin so-and-so and what happened? Or are we talking about investments? Are we talking about saving? What are the types of conversations that you have at home with your children? And then I want you to think about the type of conversations and sayings and things that you heard when you were a child. All of these things shape your money mindset. It's the reason that you think the way that you think. Just think about it. Every, every thought that you think, literally, every thought that you think, um, every word that you say, it's going to affect your actions. It affects how your body moves. I teach my students. Um, I teach a, a part-time at Spelman College. And I teach my students. I, I teach a methods class on physical education. For those of you who don't know, my undergraduate degree is in physical education. But I teach my students about total wellness and how the mind and the body and the soul and socially and social health and all those things go together. And each thing intertwines and affects the other. So it's like a person who is really sad and depressed, they may not eat, which affects their physical health, for example. That's an example of what I mean by total wellness, right? So it all goes together. So as I'm thinking, right, and and, and the words that are coming out of my mouth, it affects my, my body movement, it affects my actions, right? So think about it. What habits do you have you, yourself, what habits do you have that affect your mind and your body? Think about it. Think about it for a second. Now, this is what science tells us. Science tells us that the brain likes what is familiar. It's the reason that you keep doing the same thing over and over and over because the brain likes what is familiar. That's what science tells us. What the Bible tells us is that we can be transformed by the renewing of our mind. That's in Romans 12 too, by the way. And so you can retrain your brain. And so I want you to know that no matter what it is that has been ingrained in your mind, well, no matter what it is that you have been taught, you can retrain your brain. Okay, say it with me. I can retrain my brain. Yes, you can. All right. So um, what I find, especially for myself and also just my, my friends, clients, whatever, we actually do what we've seen our whole entire life. Um, you know, your mom did it. Your family did it. I'll give you an example. One of the things that I teach my sons, let's say you have a cashier who gives you too much money back. I teach my boys that you give the money back. Number one, that person made a mistake. Number two, you can do math. You can add. Number three, you, you, you need to be honest. It's not a blessing or a come up when someone makes a mistake and gives you too much money, for example, at the store, right? But then there are others 
who teach their children that when they make a mistake, you keep that. That's a blessing for you. So it's just about the things that you have been taught and the things that you are familiar with. And what you'll find sometimes is if you look at your life, you'll see that you're doing some of the same things that you saw your mom do and your aunts do and your cousins and your dad and your granddad. You'll see that you do some of those same things. You say some of the same things that they say, right? It's because our brain likes what's familiar. And, and so think about this. What have Say to yourself, self, what have I learned from my family? What has what has my family taught me? And because my family taught me these things, it's, I do those things. So think about those things. Sometimes I talk to people and they, um, they look back and they think about the fact that they had free lunch. And because they had free lunch, they, they think that, that that's what their kids are supposed to have. Um, maybe they moved a lot. And so stability, they, they, they also move a lot. They're used to that. They're used to those types of things. Their family begged for money. So they're used to doing that same type of thing. They are used to, um, um, shopping all the time. Some people are used to that. They live the life that their parents just bought whatever they want all the time. They're used to that. It's what you're used to right? Um, if you've seen your family fight over money, maybe that's what you're used to. So think of the things that you've learned from your family, whether positive or negative. And if you have learned some negative habits from your family, remember and repeat after me, that's not me because, and you fill in the blank. And what you can do is you can break those generational curses you don't have to continue on the same path. And like I said earlier, you can retrain your brain. You can retrain your brain. So I want to tell you a couple things that um, I enjoy. I love looking at biblical promises because they motivate me, they encourage me, and they help me, especially when life hits me with certain things. And I'm like, okay, how am I going to deal with this? And then I go back to God's promises. Let me just say this as well. So for me, I, 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 I love diving into God's word because it helps me, Yaracel, as an individual um, and the confidence that I have in myself. It's really difficult for me to accept hearing someone say negative things about me or whatever. And the reason why, not that I can't take constructive criticism. So like, let's say if I do something wrong or if I'm doing something that I could be doing better, I can take constructive criticism from that. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about when someone is trying to be deliberately hateful to me or there's some type of negativity is creeping into my brain. Because I read what God's word says about myself, it's difficult for me to believe those things because I read the Bible. So I'm like, eh, that doesn't line up with me because I read the Bible. So let me just tell you a couple of things that helps to get me through. And maybe these things will help to get you through. And maybe you need a reminder. OK, so the first reminder I want to give you is that God comforts you in all tribulations. How do I know this? Because it says it in Second Corinthians 1, 3 and 4. Remember and remind yourself when you're going through something tough, God is going to comfort you in all those tribulations. The second thing I want you to remember is that I am sufficient in God. Say it with me. That's 2 Corinthians 3, 5. That's how I know. I don't need anybody else to make me feel sufficient because I know that I'm sufficient in the master and the king. Yep. My voice is heard by God. Sometimes I feel like, dang, like you, nobody is listening to me. But I know that when I talk to the Lord, he promises that what I say to him, he is going to hear it. And that's enough for me. Sometimes it's tough for me because like, I am a strong woman. Y'all know I'm single mom and I'm, you know, I do, I'm doing this on my own. And sometimes I need help. And sometimes I may look to my left and my right and there's no one to help me, but God is my helper. How do I know it? Because it says it in Psalms 121. He's my helper and he's your helper as well. God makes me strong. It is with it is in my my weakness. I am weak, but in him I am strong. And I love that I can always remind myself that because of him, I am strong. And he and you're strong as well. 
God rescues me from trouble. So when I've gotten into bad situations, I know that he is going to rescue me. It's like my lifeline. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know that he's going to throw out, you know, the life preserver and I'm going to be okay. And you're going to be okay too. God heals my wounds. We all have stories of heartbreak and, and trouble, but just know that in Psalms 147, three, he tells us that he heals my wounds. And I love that. God will make my dreams come true. I have some dreams, y'all. I have some dreams. And I know that in Psalms 37, four, he tells me that he's going to give me the desires of my heart. And I love that. God is always present in my life. Let me just tell you something. I love this promise. Because there are times when like my mind is going all over the place, but I have trained myself. I have practiced in stopping. And sometimes I just say, okay, God, it's me again. I need your help here. But I always remind myself that he is ever present in my life. And sometimes you have to remind yourself of this as well, especially if you're starting to feel like, dang, I feel by myself. I am probably the hardest person on myself, and maybe you're like that as well, but Ephesians 1, 7 tells me that I am forgiven, and so I stand on that promise. I don't allow myself, to, I don't beat myself up. Sometimes my girlfriends have to remind me, Yarsel, you're being too hard on yourself, especially because of I think of all the things that I've gone through, and sometimes I have to be reminded that I'm being too hard on myself, and I have to remind myself that one of God's promises to me and you is that we are forgiven. I am complete in God. This is why it's so hard for me. I it, I don't take a lot of negativity. Like you can't say negative things about me and I believe them because the Lord tells me that I'm complete. So I just want you to know that you are also complete in God. And when you're feeling stressed out, this is one of my favorites. Hebrews 4, 9, I find rest in God. And so when I'm feeling stressed out, when I'm tired, I know that in him, I have rest. And maybe you're feeling stressed out and you're feeling heavy and things are like on top of you. Just remember that you have rest in God. I love this. So one of the things um, that I do want to remind you is that God doesn't lie. He doesn't disappoint. He's the creator who cares about you. And I'm always blown away how people are so fascinated by the creations, like, look at the flowers, look at the sky, it's beautiful, look at the ooh, look at the moon. But you are not fascinated by the creator who created all of it. Come on, y'all. This is an amazing thing that we have right within us and 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 close to us and always with us. So just a reminder: your strength is not sufficient. You know, you can be dope. You can be Superman. You can be Superwoman. Um, I feel like I'm dope. I think God made me just smart. I think he made me beautiful. I think he made me strong. I think he made me intelligent. However, that uh, I am, I am um, in my own strength, it's not enough. And I just tap into him. And that's when I just feel like I am unstoppable. And I want you to know that that is available to you as well. So I love, I love reading the promises of God. You can totally learn to do this. How do you do it? You retrain the brain. And here's the thing. You got to do it every single day, sometimes hour by hour. You know, there are some days where things are heavy for me. So I have to stay mindful of everything that's happening and going on around me. I have to be very mindful of it. So here's a couple things that I want you to do, because I'm getting ready to close out for today. Um, part two of our money mindset series. The first thing I want you to do is make a decision that you're going to change your financial picture. You don't even know how that's going to happen. That is okay. Make the decision, you know, say it to yourself. I'm going to change my financial picture. You know, my life is going to change. I'm not going to be struggling. I'm not going to be living paycheck to paycheck. I'm going to have emergency savings in case we have a a problem. I'm going to be able to take the vacation that I want. I'll be able to get the new furniture and the house that we need. Make the decision that you're going to change your financial picture. You got to decide it. If, if you don't make the decision in your head, it's not going to happen. Just want to let you know, you need to stop right there. Make some new goals. 
One of the things that um, those people who have the journal, one of the things that they do is they um, I, I send them a, a Excel budget spreadsheet. And I tell people who have my journal, create the budget for the life that you want. So that means if you get paid and you want to have money that goes into savings or money for this or money for that, make the budget sheet the way that you want it to be. And then you're going to figure out the rest. Go learn what you don't know. How do you learn what you don't know? You can read books, channels like this. For those of you who are on YouTube, um, um, I have a lots of videos on things that you need to know about, like dollar cost averaging, compounds int interest, life insurance, all of those kinds of things. Learn what you don't know and sit down with somebody, whatever it is, learn what you don't know, make a decision because the, the gone are the days when I, when I was a child, I thought like a child, I acted like a child. You're an adult now. You are grown, grown. So you can make some decisions to learn what you don't know. Practice retraining your brain when you have negative thoughts about money. So when you hear that, I just, I just don't make enough, stop. You know, I just don't have enough, stop. Change your mindset, okay? I tell the my clients, instead of saying uh, but, say and, you know? Um, I need a new couch, but I don't have the money for it. I need a new couch and I don't have the money for it and I'm going to figure out a way to get it done. So remove the butt, replace it with and, retrain the brain, get the negative thoughts out your head, get the negative thoughts out your head. You're going to see it <laughs> if you keep speaking it. Trust. Stop comparing yourself to other people. You cannot compare yourself to other people, y'all. You got to stop doing that. And I tell people this all the time. Everybody is different, okay? There are millionaires who make 45000 a year, and there are millionaires who make six figures, and there are millionaires um, who, uh, who do it strictly off of investing, and they don't make that much money. Don't compare yourself to other people. You're not them. It's almost like a slap in God's face, I feel like, when you compare yourself to other people because what you think you're not sufficient, you're not good enough. Give me a break. Yes, you are. You just, you just, you're different. Stop comparing yourself to other people. Don't be afraid to give. Don't be afraid to give. Let me just tell you something. You will be surprised. Um, what you will, you know, you reap and you sow. And I think a lot of people they think of uh, reaping and sowing and, you know, we use it like when somebody pisses us off. You're going to reap what you sow. This, the, the concept of sowing and reaping is it's not just tied to that type of thing. Be a giver. Don't be afraid to give. you got to let go of the scarcity mindset. Okay? So this is Money Mindset Part 2. We got a lot to digest today, so we're going to stop right there. If you don't have your journal, you got to get it at IamTheMultipreneur.com. Remember, I want you to comment on this. This goes for also the people who are going to catch the replay. Shout out to those of you who caught the replay. Share this video. I'm going to do a drawing later on. I don't know, maybe 8 o'clock. We're going to give away two journals today. And then I'm going to give away a session. For those of you who missed out on the other 90%, I am so sorry, but that workshop is sold out. And, um, and we're not doing that workshop anymore. But you can book a session. You'll get a journal and you'll get a private 60-minute session so that we can go over all of the things that are in the workbook. Um, and the workbook is dope, y'all. Oh, my gosh. A girl did her thing on that workbook. And you guys are going to really love it. For those of you who are on Instagram, maybe you're catching this. Maybe somebody shared this video with you. Follow me on Instagram. I'll follow you back. And YouTubers, those of you who are on YouTube, 
press like and subscribe. I appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube, I appreciate it if you do it. A girl's trying to get the followers up. I have a newer YouTube page. So support me in that type of way. It's free to hit that button. And if you're on TikTok, I love TikTok. Follow me on TikTok. My TikTok is super positive and fun, and I just like to laugh on it. So if you're on TikTok, follow me at YarSL. All right, you guys, have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. And, and go back, take your notes, play this again, and begin to put some of this stuff that we talked about today into practice. I know you can do it. I'll see you next week. Part three of the Money Mindset series. You don't want to miss that either. Love you. Talk to you soon. Bye.